So let's get in for the word for the day. Our topic for the day is wisdom to complete the assignment. Our month, we know we're focusing on deeper wisdom. And our topic for the day is wisdom to finish the assignment. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, as I about to minister your word, O oh Father God, may he be able to proclaim your word, O oh God, with boldness and with clarity, O oh Father God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, O oh Father, may it be acceptable, O oh God, in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And our text for this morning is taken from Philippians chapter 1, verses 6. And it reads, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. And in this small verse, just to give some context with the verse, Paul here was talking now to the church in Philippi. And he was thanking them for their level of ministry to him. For when he was in prison in Rome, these were the set of people who would have sent aid and helped Paul. So there he was thanking them for the work that they would have done for him. However, I believe that Paul's words are more than just for the people of Philippi, but it is for every believer to hold on to and to grow their confidence in. Because we don't serve a God that operates in halfway doing things. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good. Now, I am a teacher. Of course, by profession, that's what my bachelor's degree is in. So when I talk, I like to have some form of interaction. And this is Youth Sunday. So you all going to bear with me today. Amen? Amen? Amen. So repeat after me. I am on an assignment. I, we all are on assignments, and every one of us in here has done some form of assignment before, whether that's in school, whether that's in college, whether that's on our jobs or some group or civil organization that we are part of. We've all have done some form of assignment. Some of sometimes we do well on our assignments, and sometimes we have to fold up the paper, mash it up, and put it deep in our bags and throw it in the sea of forgetfulness because of the type of grades that we got. But all of us in here have done some assignment before. And as believers and as followers of Christ, we are all on assignment. We are all have a duty. All of us have a role today. And without God and without the wisdom of God, we cannot complete it. So we'll focus today on the story that's found in the Old Testament. A lot of you in here might know the story already, but we're going to look at the story and the assignment of Nehemiah. Now, Nehemiah, was, he heard about what happened. Um, he heard about what happened to the people in back in Jerusalem, the remnant that was left after the people of Israel was taken into exile. And we're going to see how Nehemiah, when he first found out what happened to him completing his assignment that he believed that God has given him. All right? But before we start any assignment or before we do anything that God has instructed us and told us to do, we first have to understand it. We first have to understand the assignment. I know being a teacher and teachers and administration, anybody could back me up on this. Sometimes we have the best lesson plans. Sometimes we have the best introductions. We have classwork, we have group work, we have our resources available. We have group work there. And then you give a test. And then you give an exam. And you see the foolishness some of these students write on these papers then you will understand, you will ask yourself whether you've been to school that day or whether you might have missed that class because you wasn't too sure. And sometimes they, <laughs> they make you sometimes doubt yourself or doubt your abilities and what you are teaching because clearly they did not understand the assignment. And just like us as believers, 
God has given all of us an assignment to do. And all of us should be on it. And whether we understand it or not will determine whether we're able to succeed in it. So show the video for me. A few moments later Clearly, these gentlemen did not understand the assignment of what they were supposed to be doing. The one with the water reminded me of some persons who was on Prince Charles early this morning out east. But <laughs> I'll leave that right there. I'll leave that. Going into Nehemiah now, we're reading from chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, and it says, The words of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah, in the month of Kislev, in the 20th year, whilst I was in the citadel of Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survive the exiles and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. And when I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. And we drop down to chapter 2, verses 4 to 5. It says, the king said to me, what is it you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven, and I answered the king, If it pleases the king, and if your servants have found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city of Judah, where my ancestors are buried, so that I can rebuild it. And like I said, before we start any assignment or before we begin anything, we must pray to the person who gives us the assignment in the first place or when we go into a new school year, or we start a new job, or we get a new role at work, we must also pray to God before we start. I know sometimes we be excited, sometimes we are too energetic and we forget to pray. But like Nehemiah, we must pray for wisdom before we start anything, before we start any job, before we start um, whatever club we might be a part of, whatever sports team, whatever new grade we are going in come September, we must pray. Because everything, because not every door that's open is the door God has for us. Sometimes we can walk into the wrong door as well. So we must pray and ask God for wisdom before we begin. And when 
We see here Nehemiah prayed after he heard the bad news and he prayed before he made his request to the king. Never underestimate the importance of prayer. Never underestimate or lose the significance of what praying does for us. And Nehemiah might have started with the wall, but his vision was to rebuild the city. Now, my question to you today is, do you understand your assignment? And for those who don't quite understand it, or for those who don't quite get it, Jesus would have made it simply clear for us when before he went back into heaven and he said in Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 to 20, he told his disciples, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. Now, Jesus, before, like I said, his ascension, he gave his disciples clear instructions on what to do, on what their assignment was after he would have already left. And that assignment is for all believers, all of us who lift up the name of Jesus, all of us who followed Christ, that is our task and our job as well, to go out and make more disciples. And sometimes, as believers, we don't quite get that, or sometimes persons might not quite understand that. Jesus didn't say please when he made his instructions known to them. He didn't say well, maybe when y'all get some free time, y'all go out on the park or something and maybe collect, get some disciples. He didn't say when y'all finish bridge watching the new season of Bridgerton, or you, <laughs> or you watch some reruns of Law and Order. Because the law and order could get very addicting when, you, when you're watching it on Netflix. <laughs> but he told us and he gave us clear instructions to go out and make disciples. So that is our assignment. And repeat after me, we are on what? We are on an assignment. And we need the wisdom of God to get there. Because sometimes we tend to forget or sometimes when challenges comes and when we face opposition, we tend to get distracted or we tend to lose faith and we tend to put it at heart. And for students, of course, school is now closed now and you guys are relaxing during the summer. And you, I know your minds is far from school. You aren't even trying to look at no book, the book catching dust or wherever you throw your bike. When you, when you take it off, we we'll probably pick it back up in August sometime. But we have to remember, as you prepare to go into your new school year, you will face some form of challenges. You are going to have a challenge. You are going to face some form of opposition. And it is important for us to know what to do when those oppositions arise. Because God has given us what? An assignment. God has given us an assignment and we have to remember what Paul said in Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It, however, it doesn't matter how hard things get, we must continue to build and do what God instructed us for us to do. And so my, goes on to my point number two, can we work despite opposition? The cat is out of by students. For those of you who do not know, sometimes you might face, and the reality is you might face a teacher who just might not like you. Or you might face a coach or a PE teacher or a club, an organization you might be a part of, and that person might not care too much for you. Or you might have students and they simply, you haven't done anything to them, and they simply just don't like you. They pick on you, they say negative things about you, and they try to oppose you. However, we must remember that he who started the good work on you will see it to completion. We have to remember the promise that God has given us that he will never leave us, 
nor forsake us. And it is greater is he that is within us than he that is against the world. So when no matter what opposition we face, we know that we're not in this alone. We're not fighting alone. We have to remember and we have to be confident in that. Because I remembered when I first came out of school on my first job, I had to be in about 18 or 19 at the time. And I was working because I had to pay for college. And that was my job, right? And I remembered vividly one day, my supervisor at the time, it was early one morning, never forgot it. She called me into the office and she looked me square in my eyes with conviction in her heart. And she said, you, I could get you fired. I could get you fired. You walking around here like you were some boss. You walking around here like you were some manager. You, I could get you fired. And the manager uh, who, was, who was in charge of all of us was in the room too. And she sat there and listened and she laughed. She was a, like, she was like a complicit. And what the supervisor had planned for me. And I never did anything. I, I thought we were cool. I thought we was good blood, you know. <laughs> but I, uh, clearly she had an issue. And that tends to happen at times. But I had to remember that I was not in this alone. So on my lunch break, I never forgot it. I went into the bathroom and I went into the stall and I prayed to God. I said, God, you were the one who opened the door for me to go to college. God, you were the one for me to open the door for me to get this job. I need your help now. I need you to sustain me. I need you to protect me on this job. And that's what I did. And I went back to, and I went back and I did my job, I came to work every day on time, and I did what I was supposed to do, because I felt confident to know that he who started the good work in me is going to see it to completion. And after I prayed, I tell you no lie, church, less than a month later, somehow we were on the same shift, and I watched that supervisor got fired herself less than a month later. And I was on the ship and I watched her walk out of that door. I can't tell you how much joy I felt in my heart <laughs> when I did that. If I got a prayers break in the, in the people job, I would have prayers break. I think I might have given a little extra offering that Sunday. Because God was faithful. Amen, my Lord. <laughs> but we have to remember that we're not in this alone and opposition is going to come sometimes we get distracted when things happen we get distracted when co-workers talk bad about us or co-work or sometimes we get a promotion and persons might be wanting that same job you have but they didn't see the hard work and the prayers and the hours that you put in to get there and we have to remember that God is the one who put you there, that God was the one who opened that door for you. So you don't have to worry about the naysayers. You don't have to worry about what people have to say about you. You don't have to worry because you serve a God that sustains. And you serve a God that is a keeping God and that will keep you protected no matter where you are and what job you might be on. So in, number, in Nehemiah chapter 4 verses 1 to 4, when Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. Now bear in mind, this had nothing to do with him. He had nothing to do with what Nehemiah and the people of Israel was rebuilding their wall. This had nothing to do with him, but he was getting in their business. And sometimes we can think back to when we mind in our own business and persons tend to stick their nose in ours. So we, <laughs> we ridicule, he ridiculed the Jews and in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, what are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can, can they bring stones back to life from those heaps of rubble burned as they are? Tobiah the Ammonite who was at his side said, 
what they are building, even a fox climb on it, would break down their walls of stones. And Nehemiah's words was, immediately after they were done, was, hear us our God, for we are despised. For we see Nehemiah pray. And a lot of times when persons talk about us, we tend to operate or we tend to allow our flesh to rise up. And we want to answer them in our flesh. For I had students who tell me, Mr. Montpetit, whatever she for, whatever they for, I five. And if they want to be the one, I could be the two, three, and the four. Because I don't want to fight, but if they want rub, we can rub. And I smile when I hear it because they get it from y'all. Because hog no better what? All right then, see what I mean? See what I mean, hog no better rub their skin. I heard a pastor before, I, I never forgot this. I heard a pastor in his sermon, he said, don't shake my tree, don't shake my tree because I ain't got no fruit in it. If you shake it, only leaves coming down. <laughs> and all I have to say is, hey, that ain't no good, so don't fool with him. <laughs> but we have to remember, we have to remember church. We have to remember young people the assignment that we are on. The devil's job is to kill, steal, and destroy. And he will do everything and anything in his power to get you distracted from the task at hand. So when we face opposition, we have to remember that we have to pray. Because sometimes we can get tired. I know sometimes we can feel frustrated. Sometimes we can allow these things to bother us. And that's natural. But we have to remember the God. The God that you pray to. The God that you worship. The God that you read about in the Bible. If he can do it for Nehemiah. If he can do it for David. If he can do it for Paul. If he can do it for the apostles. He surely can do it for me. And we have to remember that. And as they could continue to build, Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 6 to 9, so we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half of its height. For the people worked with all of their hearts. These persons started to work. They believed in the vision um, Nehemiah would have had, that he believed God would have given him. And they started to work on the wall and they started to rebuild it. But when Son Balit, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites and the people of Ashdod heard that the repairs of Jerusalem walls had gone ahead and that the gaps were being closed, they were very angry. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. But we prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to this threat. For you see, Nehemiah's enemies formed the coalition. Any coalition members in here? I just joking, I just joking, I, I'm, I'm just joking about that. But we see that they came together to oppose the work Nehemiah and the people of Israel were doing. And instead of rising in his flesh, and instead of combating them the way he could have, and fighting them head on, he, Nehemiah, was confident to know that the same God who gave them the vision, the same God who made the provision for him to start the wall, was the same God that he could count on and rely on to finish it. And that is for us, and that's what we have to remember in our own lives. That God was the one who placed you in the position you are at now. Having wisdom is to know that you can't complete any assignment on your own accord. You simply cannot do it. Having wisdom is to know that you feel that you need the full dependence on God to complete any and everything. We see that Nehemiah's enemies started and they came together and they came up against him. But instead of attacking them, instead of getting out of character, instead of putting aside his salvation, Nehemiah prayed. And that is the same thing that we must do. For I see too many times young persons who are Christians and even older ones as well, we tend to now put down our salvation because we need to answer these people head on. And we have to remember that we can't do that because the minute we do that, the devil says, aha, 
I get you. And you are now distracted from what God has for you to do. We now dampen our light. We now cannot be the testimony that God has called us to be because we just describe to someone about their body parts or we tell someone about their parents. And we can't be doing that if we are on assignment for God. Amen? Amen? We must be fully surrendered. We must be fully obedient to what God has for us to do. Yes, you are going to face opposition students. Yes, you might have some teachers, you might have some students in your school who just simply don't like you. You might not even talk to them in your life. But they simply don't care for you. And that happens. And that's a part of life. Not everyone is going to like you. Not everyone is going to be in your corner. Not everyone is going to be cheering you on. But you have to remember that God, the one who put you there, is the seeing one who is going to see you through. He is the one who is going to take you to the next level. And you have to be fully confident in this and fully persuaded that God is going to do what he said that he is going to do. So we must pray. Can we still show up every day on time? Sometimes when we feel like someone don't like us, we tend to start slacking off. We stand, especially students, you tend to not pay attention in class as much. You start walking to the class late. You start not paying attention to what the teacher has to say. You may start missing one or two assignments, but you have to remember that that isn't what God has for you. God still wants, don't forget, you are still a Christian. And because you are, and because you are a believer, you have a testimony that you must uphold. And because of that, we have to remember and to be fully confident, fully persuaded that God has my back. It doesn't matter if you don't like me. It doesn't matter if you talk bad with me. It doesn't matter. I don't care because you can't bring me down because God have me. And all of us, whether you on your job, whether you at school, all of us have to believe that. So, and not even for parents because I've worked in the school and I see how parents can carry on when they feel like someone bothering their child or someone fooling with their child. Don't touch minds. Don't fool with minds. And I get it, parents. You love your child and you love them different up. And you don't want nobody to touch them. Don't even breathe too hard in their direction. And I get that. But parents, we also have to set the example for our students, for our children. Yes, we have to let them know that yes, this might be the case, but we must pray. We must be the ones to set the example. We must be the ones to show them that when we are in these type of situations, that when persons might not too much care for us, we pray and we have to believe and we have to teach them that we serve a God, not just my God, but their God too, because God for them as well that God is able to sustain them, that God is able to keep them. Now, we don't have to get out of character. We don't have to curse. We don't have to carry on. We don't have to misbehave because God is the one who will protect us. God is the one who will redeem us and he will remove every single person out of our way. He will remove every single obstacle if we allow him to. Too many times I've seen young people, too many times I've seen believers put down the faith or they stop attending church because of the various things persons might have said to them or persons might have done towards them. But we remember, and that's when we, sometimes we focus so much on people instead of focusing on God. I ain't come in the church for nobody. I come in the church for God. And we have to be able to teach our children that. I remembered my grandmother. She always used to tell us, Pastor, Pastor ain't got no heaven to put you in. You better know God for yourself. <laughs> and I used to laugh. And as I continued to grow up, which is the Grammy, Grammy was true. Because we don't have no heaven to put you in, no pastor here. I certainly don't have none. <laughs> 
But we must believe in God. We must have our own relationship with God. And we have and the only and we have to know and be confident to know that God have me. Because I'm on an assignment. And we are on an assignment from God. So we can't get distracted. We can't lose the faith. Sometimes we're gonna feel tired. Sometimes we're gonna get weary. Sometimes we're gonna get frustrated. But God is the keeping God and we have to trust and believe in him. And every day we have to show up 24 seven to know that God have my back. So I'm not gonna continue. I'm not gonna stop reading my word. I'm not gonna stop doing my devotions. I'm gonna continue to pray. I'm gonna continue to show up every single day because I'm on an assignment. And God is the one who put me here and God is the one who will keep me and I believe and I am fully persuaded that God is the one who is going to see me through. And all of us have to believe that for ourselves because you are going to face opposition. You are going to have challenges. You are going to have hard times. And too many times we allow our flesh, like I said, to rise up. And we want to face them head on. But we can't do that because in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and 3, chapter 10, verse 3 to 4, Paul would have said, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For those weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And that's easy to say when we don't have no opposition. Yeah. It's easy to say when no one is talking bad about us at work. It's easy to say when no one trying to get at your job or no one trying to get at your position. But can we believe that? Do we truly trust in God that God is going to see me through? That I don't have to fight this battle alone. Can we trust in God enough to know that God is going to give me the wisdom, the knowledge and the understanding that I need to focus on him and to do the task that he has for me to do. We have to believe that church and young people, we have to know that for ourselves. Show the clippings for me. Dad over a bike his mom said not to buy. Woman accused of unlawful sexual intercourse with a 13-year-old boy. I pleaded with my son to change, Dad said. 19-year-old accused of sexual assault of an 83-year-old woman. Teen charged with attempted murder and armed robbery. 44-year-old man granted bail, charged for allegedly molesting a 13-year-old girl. 16-year-old boy locked up after admitting to drug possession. Senator calls for extra child protection. Six students charged with causing harm. Teachers concerned after a fight at 8 Mile Rock High School. Man charged for indecent assault of young girl. Teen charged with stealing a vehicle. Teen accused of assault with a pocket knife, granted $2,000 bail. This is right here in the country, church. This isn't in the States. We're not reading this on CNN or MSNBC or Fox News, whatever your preferred station is. This is happening right here at home. We have a generation that is coming up that is completely unchurched. They don't go to church at all. I know the student told me the only time, Mr. Mom, the only time I go to church is for funeral and weddings. And I thought only adults used to say that. And I taught religious studies. These students don't know about David. They don't know about Paul. They don't know about no Solomon. They can't tell you about Jesus. And we have to remember, church, that we are on an assignment. And God has called us to reach this generation of young people that are coming up. No longer can we stop. No longer can we allow the enemy to distract us because we have a job to do. God has given us an assignment and we have 
to stay focused. We have to stay ready. We have to stay on the wall. Because yes, the enemy may come, but I wrestle not against flesh and blood. For I know and I truly believe that we serve a God that will supply all of our needs. So no matter if you talk about me, it doesn't matter if you come up against me. I serve a God and I am fully confident and I am fully persuaded that God will do exactly what he said he is going to do. And we have to believe that. We have a generation that needs us. We have a generation that is coming up, that is hurting, and they have no one to talk to. We have students who come to school in September with cardboard at the bottom of their shoes, who duck and dodge every time it rains, who the only meal they have is when they come to school, the only safe place they have is at school. And we have to know, and they have to know, that there is a God that loves them, that is a God that can keep them, that there is a God that can sustain them. And we have to be the ones to let them know. Too many times we get distracted by the pettiness and the frivolous things, and we get distracted and we put it down. No longer can we do that because this is bigger than us. This is mightier than us. We have a generation, we have souls that need saving. We have souls that need to know about the love of God. No longer, no longer can we put this down. We have to complete the assignment and we have to be fully obedient and fully desperate and hungry for the move of God to happen. But he needs us. We have to go deeper. We have to go and commune with God more. We, we pray all the time and we pray for revival and God has prophesied it over this church and I truly believe that he is going to do it, but it takes us. Revival starts with us. Revival starts within. I don't need for the pastor to come and tell me revival because I am a glory carrier myself. And we have to do that. We have to believe that for ourselves. That when we come to church, we can pray. We can praise God the way we want because we know what God has taken us through. We know the journey that we have been on and God has been faithful to me so I can pray the way I want. I can worship God the way I want because I am confident that God has my back. We have a generation church that needs us. We call ourselves believers. We call ourselves that we are following Christ. They need us. They need to know about God and what God has in store for their lives. And as, we, and as I come to a close, the results of completing the assignment is not for us to get any form of glory or for us to get any form of praise from it. For in Nehemiah chapter six, verses 16, when all of our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. To know that God has our back, that whatever we do, we serve a God that can see us through. And we have to believe that, and we have to know that, and that have to be written on our hearts and engraved in our hearts and in our souls. To know that it is not about us. It is not about me. It is not about Pastor Keno or Pastor Dave or Minister Dexter. It's about what God has to do. So church, remember we are on an assignment from God. May we not get distracted. May we not lose hope. May we not lose faith. That God have us. God has you. So when you go on your job and they oppose you, may you continue to pray. May you continue to press on. May you continue to press forward. For when they talk bad about you, may you not lose hope. May you know who sustains you. 
May you be reminded that the one who put you there, the one who took you through all of the obstacles and the challenges that you would have had in the past, he is the same one. He is the same one that I read about in the Bible and he does it today. May we not lose hope. May we not lose heart. Yes, we may be tired. Yes, we may be frustrated. Yes, we may feel worried, but we have a generation that needs us. May we be open for what God has to do. May we be open for the move of God. One of my prayers is God don't move without me. God, may I never miss what you have to do. May we be the vessels that God has called us to be. We are on assignment, church. So may we never wrestle with flesh and blood. May we leave it to God. Thank you.